Welcome back. Bacon Bourbon Build. I'm Greg and today I'm going to use a pattern to make a gift which is a wooden wine bottle glass holder that fits over the top of the bottle. I got this idea from Make Something online so I'm gonna put a link in the description below to let you know where I found these plans online and the maker who actually taught us how to do that so all respect to that but I'm gonna give it my best shot. Thanks for watching. To do this project, I've chosen to use exactly what they have in the other video, which is maple and walnut. These are rough boards, so we're going to have to mill some lumber, which also means this will be the first time that I'm going to use the new planer in the shop, and hopefully I don't screw that up because it's a really nice machine and it's really nice wood, and I better get it right. I've got enough wood here for three templates end to end, so I'm going to measure that out and I'm going to cut it on the miter saw make sure that that end is square and then we're going to joint the edges and start ripping it down on the table saw. Two pieces cut to about the same length, and we're start to joint one side and then rip them down so I can get them across the joiner on the face. So I've got the wood ripped down. You can see it's in pieces here, but it still fits together pretty well. And I just use a little trick of writing the letters A, B, C, D, E, F across to keep the grain pattern even. Same here, A, B, C, D, E, F. Next up, I'm going to put it back on the joiner since my joiner is only six inches wide and I couldn't fit the whole six inch planks across the joiner on the face. I ripped them down. We'll joint one face of each side and that way it'll be flat enough that we can glue it up and run it through the planer.
and taking the pieces down to 7 eighths of an inch. That didn't cut these at all. We're going to make it narrower. Right, so all the walnut and the maple are through the planer. And we've got pretty even thickness of all these boards. It's tough to tell. So that means now they're ready for the final rip cut, which is the little quarter inch strips that are going to go into the other set to give that color shade a little bit different pop. Well, like I said before, I'm making these wine holder toppers from plans that I found online, and I got to give credit where credit's due. This is David Picciuto's recipe for a cool one-day woodworking project, his wine holder rack. And so I am putting a little spin on it. I did the maple with the walnut inlay, but at the same time, I took the piece of walnut and I laid in some maple as well. So I did a cross-cross, and I think the template here will fit three of the wine ovals on each board that I've got. What's left for me to do now is to glue it up and clamp it down and then hopefully get the line straight and flush and even as much as I can before I run it through the planer, get it down to about five eighths of an inch because I'm told that's what looks the best. But again, thank you to David Picciuto and Make Something and I'll put a link to this design in the comments below or in the description below and you'll be able to check it out for yourself and hopefully buy the plans because I did and it made it super easy and super straightforward and the templates that are included to print out are really really easy to do one thing I will note if you do have the stock get stock that's a little wider my stock was a little thin so it's gonna be just wide enough to fit this whole template on the top of my planks once they're glued up just wide enough but I guess that'll mean I have less waste to cut off with my jigsaw So we did a little montage there of the glue up and here it goes. I got some wax paper on there just to keep the glue from sticking to all my clamps and bars and everything.
but I also used some runners across the top of my panels such that I hope these quarter inch spacers in the wood won't pop out top or bottom. I'm hoping to keep it all as flat as possible even though the planer can take care of most of that. I'm just hoping to keep it as easy as I can so that I can cut it down and make it all flush when it's all done. So I'm having some fun with this. I like the two-tone color approach. We have red wine, white wine, and hopefully it'll be appreciated. Next step, we're going to take the pattern, put a little spray adhesive on it, just on the back, lightly, and I got a little cardboard protector here so that I don't get spray adhesive over everything. Light coat on the back, stick it to the wood, uh, should peel off later very easily, but it'll help me saw it down and fit the shape on the sander. If you can see, helpful tip, I put marks uh, at the halfway point. My board is actually five and three eighths inches thick, so it's just wide enough to fit the pattern, but uh, two and, what is that, 11 sixteenths, mark a mark, and the marks can go on the wood because this is gonna be waste anyway when we cut out the holes for the glasses. If I were batching these out, I'd put all the patterns across the wood and just cut them all out at once. Since this is going to my sommelier friend, I want to do one light and one dark. I'm just going to do those two for now, and the rest of the wood I'll save for another day when I'm feeling adventurous and want to make some more wine holders. ready. Well, coming along, I've got the holes drilled from the drill press. So next, we're going to cut the shapes out of the pattern. However, in my shop, I don't have a bandsaw, so I've got a jigsaw. I feel like the paper's moving.
there you go. I used a 1 8 inch round over bit on the router table to round over all of the sides of the white wine and red wine glass holders. Now, they're all sanded. They're all nice and smooth. They fit well together. They feel great. There's no bumps or scratches. I am choosing to use a cutting board finish on this. I have some butcher block oil and some of this butcher blocks wax that and conditioner because I know you can use spray lacquer and, and do it that way, but I was thinking it'd be nice to have these just like you would a cutting board or anything like that. If you're gonna do wine and cheese, you can use this to carry the wine and glasses in, take the top off, put the cheese right on it, and it's gonna be food safe for everybody. Well, there you have it. Thanks for watching this video. We're gonna celebrate with a little Maker's Mark and some bacon, of course. Mmm. We made some wine tables. It went together pretty well. I will say that um, I wasn't sure how it was gonna come out, but the sanding on the disc sander really helped a lot. So it came out pretty flat and I was really impressed with how well we could make the curves line up if you have a sander like that. What I will say about the process is that it's able, you're able to do this with whatever tools you have. Obviously, I could have spent a lot of time with some planes and some chisels and sandpaper and made it really nice, but having a planer uh, definitely made it easier. The disc sander worked really well. And I didn't have a bandsaw, so watching the Make Something with David Picciuto definitely showed me how a bandsaw would really help with cutting out the shapes, but the jigsaw worked just fine. Like I took the advice, if you have a good wood bit and you hold it steady and you make sure it's nice and straight, the disc standard can erase some of those uh, flaws in the curvature of the edge and how you approach the line. But it worked out really well. Finished it with just cutting board or butcher block finisher, so it should hold up to uh, moisture pretty well. It brings out the finish of the wood really nicely. and. That way, if you want to put your wine glasses on it, carry it out with the bottle, and then put this down and put your snacks, cheese, crackers, whatever it may be, maybe some Biscoff right on the wine table, it can serve two purposes. I did two colors, so my creativity told me take that walnut that you've got and flip it with the maple. So I've got the white wine and the red wine version. But this isn't wine bacon build, this is bacon bourbon build, so while this is meant for wine and wine parties, I'm going to finish it off with some bourbon. Like I said before, this is gifts for a friend who is a sommelier. Hopefully he appreciates them and they match the decor pretty well where they're going. But I had a great time doing it and I also appreciate the fact that this is something you can batch out really easily if you're going to do a craft show, if you want to sell these things. I could see where you could cut 5, 10, 15 of them all at once and then sand them all down and be done with the process in a pretty, pretty short manner. But I had a good time. And that's why, now that the work is done and no more power tools, I can have some bourbon, I can have some bacon, and I can enjoy this build. Thanks for watching Bacon Bourbon Build. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe. Check out more videos. I'll be trying to do them as often as I can. But really, this is a hobby, so I just enjoy the process.